Hi, welcome to the breadboard. I'm going to show you a video uh, live streaming thermal imagery of the Raspberry Pi Model 3 um, under a normal operating condition and under load. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen on a few community forums uh, a lot of talk about how hot the Pi is running under load and the internal sensor versus uh, thermal imagery are showing a very very different view of what is going on so because I have a Fleur AX8 thermal imager, it's an industrial thermal imaging uh, camera that RS Components has uh, sent to me to evaluate I was able to do some close-up views of the Raji Pi and try and confirm a few things for myself so what I've done is I've made a video of it so that you can actually see the live streaming image from on the thermal imager for yourselves and hopefully you'll come to the same conclusions as I have. Is initially I was skeptical that the CPU would have been running as hot as it is but at the end of the day I was wrong. It actually is getting an exceeding 100 degrees. The highest temperatures I got was about 110, 111 degrees centigrade and that's just running Sysbench um, generating prime numbers with 32 threads on it so the CPU was maxed out and one of the other things that you will see as we go through the video near the end is that the within the CPU chip itself I was able to get close enough to discern uh, different areas of the CPU chip at least from the outside of the casing of it anyway to show that there are huge temperature gradients on that CPU die that depending on where they have put their temperature sensor it can give you a massively different reading and you know I was doing only a CPU benchmark not a GPU benchmark um, so obviously the GPU silicon is going to be in a different area on the chip and as you will see in the video uh, that could give you a huge difference in readings depending on what kind of load you're subjecting the Pi to anyway without further ado let's get into the video and uh, you can see for yourself. I've had a few questions and seen on the communities a few times uh, questions regarding the operating temperature of a Raspberry Pi 3 when it is inside one of those little clamshell kind of cases. Now I've had one running for about a month now and the case is fairly well sealed up. Right now you're looking at a thermal image of a plank of wood basically. It's a piece of mahogany that's just standing up in front of my Fleur AX8 thermal imager. The background, which I'm, you're going to see my hand now, this is the piece of wood here. The background at the bottom is a small 10, and a, uh, 10 inch LCD industrial shields display and you can see that the temperature is not much above body temperature. So that would be, you know, sort of in the region of 30 35-ish degrees C, something like that. In fact, let me put one of my uh, the probes right on it, and you can see n number one is what I'm going to use right here, which seems to be the hot spot. So number one is reading 36 degrees. Uh, this background with the images of the mannequins and things is just the screen of one of my regular LCD displays because the AX8 has um, MX mode, which means it can outline what it sees over the thermal imaging that's why you're seeing part of the picture if I just turn off the uh, thermal for the moment just go to visual you see there's the piece of wood um, here's the camera the TV screen uh, my monitor background and here's the uh, industrial shields LCD display so let's just go back to thermal MX so you know what I'm well oh, I'm sorry leave that there for a second so what I have just to show you is this is the, sorry, the contrast of the computer screen is kind of messing it up a little bit. But this is the um, Pi in its case. I've got a ribbon cable coming out, but so the side panel is off. But basically the ribbon cable connector almost completely blocks the um, Pi's port. So it's still, there's no real airflow going through this thing. Let's go back to thermal view. And you can see here that the Pi itself, from the outside at least, is not, warmer than my hands okay so what I'm going to do on camera and this has been running for about a month now non-stop at least um, running node red with uh, talking to the thermal camera um, talking to a industrial shields PLC and running a web page and also talking to a smart app 
continuously so it should be you know a fairly warm and fairly stable state so when I take this off um, I'll move the probes if I can hold it still enough in so we could measure what the hot spot might be so right now if you look at number one this is on the outside of the case or through the case this is showing about 31 degrees so I don't know how close I can get without um, being able to not focus properly. So let me just adjust the range because I'm going very close now. Oh yeah, distance. So let's just say it's... The reason for the distance is so that it can align the imaging with the outlines there. It's, okay, it's lined it up again. The ones further back are a bit off now. Alright, now these points here, this box uh, min, max and average, are all they automatically float around to um, pick up the highlight. So if this is truly running at 100 not degrees centigrade or something, the maximum should immediately run into the middle box. So let's just take the lid off now. Okay, so it the maximum has definitely jumped into the middle. And as you can see here, the maximum right here, if I lift it up away from number one, is the main CPU chip. And it is only sitting at 47 degrees and that's after a month inside this case and even the one over here which is off to the side um, I have put number one probe on that it's only at 41 40 39 degrees so you can see this is not anything that is particularly hot so you can see there's the Pi 3 inside a case and if I go back to thermal imaging as you can see the hot spot is flipping between those two chips one of which is I think the radio and the other one is the main Broadcom Broadcom chip and the hotspot is sitting right there I'll put number one on it and it's sitting at 45 degrees thereabouts I can't get it any I don't know if I can get it any closer and get a more accurate reading yeah 40 to 44 degrees it's just I'm holding it in my the whole thing in my hand so it's a little bit more wobbly but you th you can clearly see the circuitry there and um, the two hot chips and as you can see nothing is above 47 degrees in that case and it's, as I say it's had the lid on for about a month now running so I don't think that the claims of it running at 100 degrees and things like that uh, necessarily founded. Now I don't know if I'm taxing this overly sort of like too much or anything but it certainly is not sitting at a hundred degrees centigrade. Okay I have just started running uh, Sysbench with 32 threads so according to the CPU utilization I'm sitting maxed out at a hundred percent with all four CPUs so if I start another terminal um, just so that I can see what the CPU is doing Okay, I've had uh, the um, benchmark running for a little while. I've actually changed it to run. Initially, I only had one thread running, so I've changed it to run 32 threads so that the CPU is showing 100%, uh, which I was saying before. And now, if I look at the CPU frequency, you can see here that it is running at the full 1.2 gigahertz that the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 is able to run at. And all, even though I'm only showing CPU 3 here, all four of them are running at that speed. And if I go look at the temperature that it thinks it is at, if I go back far enough, uh, there, you can see it's now running at about 73 degrees centigrade. Now this has been doing this now for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, it is starting to get quite warm. Now, like I said, I'm running this thing quite heavily using the prime number calculator. So 32 threads. All right, so I've got the Pi back up in, in front of the uh, thermal imager. So let's just take the cover off. And we'll see how hot this thing is getting now. So there we are. Uh, obviously, the network part of it is not running anywhere near as warm as the uh, over here. It was a hot spot before. Now the CPU obviously is hogging all the limelight by being the hottest item and you can see here that the maximum temperature now is actually indeed 100, 100 degrees. This 
does show that those figures do seem to pan out that it will get up to about 100 degrees inside a case. You can see now that I've taken the case lid off, it's actually starting to cool down a little bit, but it certainly was up there at about 100 degrees. Now that's running a stress test. In most cases, you're not going to be doing that. So uh, I think this shows that if you are going to be heavily loading your pie, and I mean heavily loading it, then it would be prudent to put maybe some kind of heat sinks or certainly make sure there's plenty of ventilation running around uh, the, the CPU with either a fan or something like that. For most of us that don't run anything to that level of CPU usage, certainly not for extended periods of time, then it probably still would be fine. It is clocking it right up to the 1.2 gigahertz, etc. So the other way to um, keep it cooler is actually just to artificially limit the upper CPU frequency by changing the boot config.txt file to say limit it to I don't know 900 megs or uh, even a gigahertz, just to, you know a bit lower than the maximum. Right now, as you, as I said, this is running at 1.2 gigahertz across all four CPUs, and as you can see there, well actually you can see there now it's cooled right down. That probably means that the test has stopped running. Yeah. So if I leave that here, let me see if I can rearrange this screen so that we can see everything. All right, so there's the readings, min, max, average. I'll hold the camera here for a, a while, and we'll run the benchmark, and so you can see that very rapidly drop back down to 50 degrees, so I'm running it now. So it's going up to 70. Going up to 80. The nice thing with this thermal imager is even if I'm moving it, it automatically finds the hot spots. Going up to 90, go getting close to. Now, because I'm running this with the case off, of course, the lid off, it's not going to get as, as hot. Yeah, so with the case on, it's got up to about 100. With that case off, it seems to be stopped at around 85, 86. Now that is maxed out on the CPUs. Doing this live, guys, so it really is clarifying the fact that the built-in thermal sensor temp is um, not a reflection of what the thermal imager is seeing. But, uh, yeah, running this thing for all the CPUs easily gets to 100 degrees C. As I said, with no red running, some web pages and a few other things, there is no issues with it getting too hot. It sits comfortably in the 40 degrees C kind of region. It's only when you're banging the 1.2 gigs and uh, running all four of them that you get up to the 100 degrees C kind of mark. Anyway, uh, so I guess the thermal imaging that we saw, which I thought initially seemed a little dubious, um, are correct and also this seems to be confirming that the CPU temperature measurement uh, thermal zone zero temperature measurement at least is a long way off from what the CPU actually is so it would be interesting to know where that thermal sensor is on the board whether it is built into the CPU or whether they've got it sitting on one of the other chips so I've managed to get the camera a little bit closer to the uh, Raspberry Pi so that I'm filling the screen up, maximizing the resolution usage on the CPU board. And you can see there a clear outline of the actual CPU chip and you can see the hotspot is actually right smack in the middle of it. And as I've got so close now, you can see I've lengthened the time that the test has been running and it's up to about 107 degrees on that chip. Now what can we conclude from this? Because when we look at this, and then we go back and we look at um, what the, you can see here, I've got the uh, top running. So you can see that the CPU is running at 100% and uh, everything is very, very busy. But if I also look at what the uh, temperature sensor is reading for, for the Raspberry Pi, let me just bring this one up into view. Um, it's still reading 77 degrees. So 160, 77, that's 30 degrees difference. Now, one thing that is not clear is where is the temperature sensor when you're doing that on here? I would assume that it is probably in this chip somewhere, but if I take 
um, this number one and say put it in the corner. All right, you can see number one there is reading around about 66 degrees, 67, 70, which would align with what the temperature sensor is saying. But the central frequent, the central temperature, which is where that one is that's floating around is measuring the 109, 110 degrees. So even within the chip, depending on where the position of that thermal sensor is, it can be making a huge difference on the actual temperature. Now, it could be that it's measuring nearer the GPU versus the CPU. Um, it could be that it's just put in a convenient place under the board and it's actually on the motherboard, not on the chip itself, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to go doing some digging to figure out where it actually is, if I could find out at all. If anybody knows, put a comment in. But this can show you clearly here, though, that depending on where you measure, you're going to get a big difference. This is like 30 degrees difference, more than 30 degrees, so almost 40 degrees difference from the edge of the t chip to that central hotspot of the chip, which is obviously where the CPU cores are. So um, be aware of that. When you use the um, measure command, in the console, whether it, whether you're doing the CAT or the VC general command measure temperature, uh, there's only one temperature measurement and under load it can be significantly different if you're um, running a CPU intensive application versus maybe a GPU intensive application. Now I don't have any GPU intensive ones here but you can see just from the thermal imagery that um, there is a massive difference between the um, CPU hotspot right in the middle of that chip and the outside edge. And I would imagine that the GPU itself is going to be probably further out to one of those outer areas maybe. Um, so you can't trust, especially at high loads, what the CPU temperature is telling you. Oh, sorry, what the silicon temperature is telling you. It's not necessarily trying to tell you the CPU. It's probably just telling you the average GPU temperature. In fact, if I deliberately hold um, my thermal imager back, right as you can see right here up close, it's telling me it's 110 degrees. If I bring it back so it's having uh, using less sensors and doing more of an average, you can see way back here now where it's probably just one, it's now reading like in the uh, high 90s. So it's lost about 10 degrees. If I come further back, right, so it's reading about 90. So even there, right, it's not, it's reading much, much higher than the thermal sensor is reading. So I would imagine that that thermal sensor is probably on the outer edge of the chip or something like that. I don't have an image of the silicon, so I don't know where precisely it is, but it is certainly not smack in the middle of the CPU. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, I hope you like that, and I hope it clarifies a few things. I was certainly dubious of the initial readings that I saw because I couldn't really fathom that the CPU temperature was so far away um, under load than what the built-in measurement device was, but as I said, depends on where it is. Uh, the thermal imager is um, fairly accurate. I mean, even if it's even if it was 10% out, which it's not, um, it still shows a massive significant difference in the temperature sense of the thermal imager versus the Pi itself. So, um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of skepticism around how well this is reading at the uh, under load, and you can see why. Um, so uh, if I find out more information, I will do another video. But anyway, I just wanted to present these findings. Uh, if I didn't have the FLIR thermal imager from RS Components, I wouldn't have been able to do that for you, but I have. So thanks RS for that. And um, I will be doing some more measurements in the future as I do various other uh, tests with the Pi and other devices. So uh, that's it for now. Bye.